If you're new to astrophotography, choosing your first camera can be quite overwhelming. When you ask for advice, you might get complex answers with technical terms like quantum efficiency, read noise, dynamic range, and resolution. People will also tell you that there isn't a single camera that can do everything very well. Experienced astrophotographers like me will ask you to decide between planetary imaging and deep sky astrophotography. So what are the main differences between these two? I'll explain it in simple terms in this video without getting too technical, and I'll discuss some great planetary and deep sky cameras that are on the market today in 2023. I'm Wiede Oerlemans, an astrophotographer from Utrecht, the Netherlands. I'm passionate about planetary imaging and astrophotography. And on my channel, I love sharing my knowledge with you. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with others. Your support means a lot to me. Let's start with planetary imaging, which is all about capturing images of the planets. Planets appear relatively small in the night sky from Earth, even under the best conditions. They're about 1 50th the size of the Moon and often even smaller. Since planets are bright objects illuminated by our Sun, short videos are often used to capture them. Specialized software like SharpCap or FireCapture can record short videos of the planets. And later, these videos are processed using software like AutoStagit or Registex, selecting high quality frames and discarding the rest. I have separate videos and information on my website on how to capture and process the planets, and I'll provide links to that information in the video description below. Planetary imaging allows you to capture intriguing surface details of planets like Mars or Jupiter, and even create animations showing their rotation or the passage of their moons. Here are two timeless videos I've created of Jupiter and Mars using my HHD 8-inch telescope with a ZWO678MC planetary camera. Now let's talk about deep sky astrophotography. This involves capturing the light from objects outside of our solar system located far away. The challenge here is that the light emitted by these objects is extremely faint, so long exposures are needed, sometimes lasting several minutes. Accurate tracking of the objects in the night sky with a high quality equatorial mount is crucial. Multiple images are captured and stacked together to create a final image. Deep sky astrophotography requires hours or even days of capturing time. The software used for capturing and processing deep sky images is different from that used for planetary imaging. Popular choices include NINA, the ASI Air, Sequence Generator Pro, Deep Sky Stacker, PixInsight, or Photoshop. As an example, here are two pictures I took of the Eagle Nebula and the Pillars of Creation, one at 500mm focal length showing the whole nebula, and one at 1500mm focal length showing a close-up of the Pillars of Creation. When you're choosing a camera for planetary or deep sky astrophotography, there are a few key things to consider. One important factor for planetary imaging is the frame rate per second, or FPS in short. In planetary imaging, we're capturing short videos of planets, usually lasting only one to three minutes. The FPS value determines how many frames your camera can take in one second. So if you have a camera with 10 frames per second and you record a one minute video of Jupiter, you'd get 600 frames. But with a camera that has 50 frames per second, you'd get 3000 frames. Having more frames increases your chances of getting high quality images. However, in deep sky astrophotography, where we capture long exposure images, the FPS doesn't matter at all. Another important factor to consider, especially for deep sky imaging, is cooling. When taking long exposure images, the camera can generate heat, which leads to unwanted noise in the images. Cooling your camera with a dedicated Pelche cooler can significantly reduce this noise, making your deep sky images much cleaner. While cooling isn't necessary for planetary imaging, it's highly beneficial for deep sky work. Resolution, measured in megapixels, is also a factor to think about. Planets appear as small objects in the night sky, so a camera with one megapixel is usually enough to capture images of the planets. However, if you want to capture the Moon, a higher resolution planetary camera that can fit the entire disk of the Moon might be useful. In deep sky astrophotography, where you encounter objects of various sizes, a higher resolution camera helps you to capture larger celestial objects effectively. For both planetary and deep sky imaging, you can choose between a mono or a color camera. Starting with a color camera is recommended for beginners, as mono imaging requires more equipment and complex techniques. Two more important aspects to consider are read noise and quantum efficiency. Read noise is the unwanted electronic noise in the camera system affecting the detection of faint signals in deep sky astrophotography. 
A camera with low read noise is better for deep sky work, but also for planetary imaging. Quantum efficiency measures the sensor's ability to detect and convert photons into a signal. High quantum efficiency is desirable for both planetary and deep sky imaging. Lastly, dynamic range is essential for image quality. A higher dynamic range allows for more tonal variations and intensities in your pictures, more bits in the analog to digital converter, and a higher full well capacity in your camera sensor result in a higher dynamic range. This is important when processing your images for better results. So when choosing your camera, think about these factors, how they will fit your specific astrophotography or planetary imaging goals. Finding the perfect astrophotography camera can be a challenging task. I regularly evaluate the specifications of cameras considering crucial factors like read noise, quantum efficiency, dynamic range, and specific requirements needed for planetary or deep sky imaging. In this video, let me give you a quick overview of ZWO color cameras that I think are great for planetary imaging and deep sky astrophotography. ZWO is one of the most well-known brands, but of course there are other brands like QHI, Altair and ATIC on the market today, so I recommend you also do your own research. Link to each of the cameras can be found in the video description below, as well as a link to my website where you'll find more extensive information about each of these cameras. As for ZWO's planetary color cameras, the ZWO ASI 662MC camera currently priced at $249 and the ZWO ASI 678MC at $299 offer great value for planetary imaging in 2023. The ASI 678MC provides superior resolution, a higher frame rate and reduced read noise for an additional $50. Conversely, the ASI 662MC offers higher quantum efficiency and increased full well capacity. Both cameras utilize a 12-bit analog to digital converter adjustable to 10-bit for improved frame rates. Featuring cutting-edge Sony IMX sensors with Starvis 2 technology, these new ZWO cameras eliminate amp glow and offer a high gain conversion mode to minimize read noise and preserve dynamic range. For deep sky color cameras within the $1,000 range, I recommend the ZWO 294MC Pro and the ZWO 533MC Pro. The 294MC Pro provides a larger landscape field of view, ideal for capturing large celestial objects, and offers a higher dynamic range and full well capacity compared to other sub $1,000 options. The 533MC Pro offers a square field of view at lower read noise, higher quantum efficiency and reduced amp glow compared to the 294MC Pro. In the $1 to $2,000 range, the ASI 2600MC Pro stands out with its high quantum efficiency, high dynamic range and resolution of 26 megapixels. Furthermore, the recently released ASI 2600MC Duo incorporates a unique guide camera chip, eliminating the need for separate guiding equipment. For those unconstrained by budget, the ASI 2400MC Pro is recommended for longer focal length telescopes and the ASI 6200MC Pro boasts an impressive 61 megapixel resolution. Well, I hope this information helps you in your search to find a good camera for planetary or deep sky imaging. If you have any additional questions, feel free to use the comment section below or contact me directly on my website. If you like this content, please like, subscribe and share the video. Clear skies.